Hello everyone. Uh, we are making our way through Search for a Nonviolent Future and I might as well take this opportunity to share some good news with you. I just heard this morning that uh, a gentleman who's been trained at Gujarat Vidya Peet, it's that uh, university that was founded by Mahatma Gandhi, has uh, just undertaken to translate this book into two North Indian languages, Gujarati and Hindi. So. Uh, our audience will be expanding, possibly by a large chunk. So we are uh, in the chapter called Getting Down to Cases, and uh, uh, I'm really taking different approaches to one basic point, which is that there are really two kinds of energy in the world, two kinds of energy that we can address ourselves to and employ, and the results of using loving or nonviolent energy will always be good on some level. The results, on the contrary, of using not violent energy will always be not good. They'll always be destructive. So at that level, things are very simple. It then becomes a question of how do we recognize one type of energy or the other. And that really boils down to a question of how do we feel when we're doing something? Do we have that little catch of anxiety that's telling us that you're alienating yourself and you're alienating yourself from another person? Or do we feel that we're not really acting, that something is moving through us that's, that's going to have a good, a good effect? So that's why we're trying to look at it from many different angles. And I talk uh, here, we're on page, about page 90, about the uh, uh, Serbian war and the attacks uh, on Serbia by the US. And I'd like to add a couple of things here. Uh, and pardon me if you've heard one or two of them before, but one of them is that the contrast, the beautiful contrast between the fact that uh, NATO bombed Serbia for 13 weeks at enormous financial cost, enormous human cost, enormous cost to the infrastructure, and it ended up leaving Milosevic uh, still in power, President Slobodan Milosevic, who had started a number of ethnic cleansings and wars. And then when the student uh, uprising, student-led uprising was launched, and this is very well described in a film called uh, Bringing Down a Dictator, that took one day to unseat him and, and put a more responsive, more democratic government in place. And uh, I think this shows the difference in power, the difference in the amount of power between nonviolence and violence. And nonviolence is really much more powerful when you learn to recognize it. I'd also like to add, and this is getting back to our main point of what kind of energy are we dealing with, that uh, there's, since I wrote this book, there was another and horrible unlooked for consequence of all of the violence that's been unleashed uh, in the Middle East. And that is that uh, we have been creating failed states. We've been creating vacuums into which ISIS and the Islamic State with all of its horrendous violence and terrorism has very happily run. So uh, while in the, in the book I talked about the enormous human cost, the number of the children lost, the destruction to the environment, all of those things, uh, there's now we're realizing there's been another cost, which is in, in a way even more devastating, that we were sort of you know, wiping these governments, these systems off the map, creating vacuums, and then ISIS rushes into these vacuums. Uh, and then on page 93, I bring in the concept I borrowed from physics of an event cone. And I would like to put that into contrast with the fantasy of uh, surgical strikes. The idea in surgical strikes that we are expected to believe by the military is that you can go in and use a certain amount of violence and it'll create a very, very narrow, very specific impact and every, everything else will be just fine. But in reality, what happens is the exact opposite, that from that single act, you spread out into an event cone of wider and wider circumstances. 
And now it's only good science to believe and uh, to test to this hypothesis that you get an event cone from nonviolence also, that one conspicuous, intense, nonviolent act will lead to an array of positive developments, many of which will be so far down the line that you may not be able to connect the dots and realize them. And I suppose we don't have to know in detail what exactly results from our actions. It seems like the only thing we really need to know is what kind of energy have we put into them. Then uh, on page 93, I, I talk about some basic principles uh, to bear in mind. And they are, if you will pardon me while I find that page. Yeah. Uh, that evidently the deeper message uh, is slightly more effective. What I mean here is uh, during this goes all the way back to an essay by Vera Brittain, who uh, proposed and then somewhat studied the effects of intense bombing on the German people during World War II with the idea in mind that it would break their morale. It did exactly the opposite. Here are the three principles. Uh, acts of love, which is one definition that Gandhi had for nonviolence, that arise in a peak state of self-control, do work beyond the psychological work that they do within the actor. There's the fact that I feel more humane, really, more centered, more um, assured, more confident about my own capacities when I manage to do something nonviolent. But yet beyond that, three things result. They persuade people to change in the ways that we want them to change. And that very often does happen. Secondly, contrary to all expectations, it actually is safer to carry out nonviolence than to carry out violence. We think, oh my gosh, you have to have a gun to protect yourself. I'm reminded of uh, a peace pilgrim who asked a police captain, friend of hers, uh, said, I'm about to go hitchhiking across the country, and not just hitchhiking, walking across the United States. Should I take a gun to protect myself? Uh, and lone woman. And he said, that is the stupidest thing that you can possibly do. So uh, often nonviolence has its own protection. And thirdly, and most importantly, this is what we've been stressing, a nonviolent act will work on a much deeper level to really change the soil so that better, better results of every kind will emerge. And if only we could do that more intensely and more consistently, we would see, guess what, a nonviolent future. So thank you very much until next time.